Okay, welcome to this uh, introductory video on uh, the SCARA Robotic Arm Lab. It's just going to go quickly through explaining how uh, this, this lab is intended to work. So, um, the purpose of this lab is to give you some experience building a mathematical model of a, of a real thing in the real world and then using that model to design a control system. So we're using one of these which is called a Selective Compliance Articulated Robotic Arm. Essentially it has uh, two completely flexible joints, the things you can see on the left and right. Uh, sorry if I just sketch over the top of that. Um, so these two joints here and here are completely flexible. This one has a fixed axis down the middle and so by rotating uh, these things here, uh, these two motors here this way and that way, we can get this arm to move left and right and forward and back in a few different ways. So essentially it gives you really nice, really precise control over a two-dimensional plane. Now. The purpose of this lab is you've got three weeks of, of lab time and you're working in groups of your own choosing and uh, we've got essentially three things to uh, to do during that week. Um, the three things to do during during that period is we have to, um, what, what the end goal is, sorry let me start with that, what the end goal is is to be able to take pictures, uh, whether it's a picture of me just as a pirate or a picture of a Unicode snowman or any picture give that to our model and our model should be able to calculate from that where the uh, where the arm should go with the pen up and down in order to draw a picture of that. Now the reason that we're using this to, to draw things is mostly for simplicity. This is much more commonly used in CNC routing machines but there's obviously some health and safety issues with getting you to build one of those or a full scale kind of 3D laser cutter. So we started with a, a simple drawing thing but the general purpose here is to give you really precise control over a two-dimensional plane. So in order to draw some of these shapes, uh, we have to go through a few steps. And the first is, um, what what signals are we going to give our motors to get them to turn? Every different motor is built differently, and so will require slightly different signals. So we'll have to figure out what those are. The second part is we're going to have to figure out, right, once we know what signals correspond to what position of the motors, what positions of the motors correspond to what positions of the pen? Um, where is the pen going to be? It's going to be up, down, left, right. Uh, we need to know that. And then the final thing is, in order to draw something like a Unicode snowman, where does the pen need to be in order to make those lines? So eventually, once we've finished everything, we're going to have uh, an image. We'll convert that image into a series of motions for the pen. That those series of motions will be converted into angles to be given to the motors and then those angles will be converted to signals to be given to the motors in order for our little Arduino to be able to control this. It's quite involved but it is also quite a lot of fun as we get to start drawing more interesting things. So for the rest of this video I'm just going to quickly go through describing um, how we do this. Now I'm not going to derive any of the equations here, that'll be a separate video, but in general um, I'd like to introduce you to direct and inverse kinematics. Kinematics uh, just means we assume uniform acceleration, so uh, if you remember your kinematic equations from physics, it's the same general concept. We make a bunch of simple assumptions so that things move instantaneously and don't have too much momentum. Direct kinematics, all that means is if I know the locations and the angles of my motor, where is my pen? And inverse kinematics means doing the opposite. So if I know where my pen is, where must my motors be? So just to explain how all of this fits together, this down here is going to be our, our sketch, our kind of diagram of our arm. And it's called a five bar mechanism because we've essentially got this rigid structure here, a length between the two motors. Each motor has a particular angle there and there. We've got four identical length um, armatures, if you like, and then by setting these angles of the motors, we dictate what positions these joints have, and the, by dictating the position of those joints, we can actually calculate where that tool, where the pen will be. That process is following through these kinematic equations. Um, so when we go through this, what we do is we imagine what would happen if we kept one arm stationary and moved the other. Um, and there are a few things to avoid. Uh, situations like this where you've got both arms pulling equally as strongly in the opposite directions is called a singularity. Mathematically these will come out as divisions by zero or other kind of problematic equations. So we need to watch out for some of those. 
but a lot of this looks much more complicated than it is. For example, if we just look at one of these motors and one of these positions, let's look at the left one over here, for example, as we do in the lab script. If I know the position of my motor, and that's X M1 and Y M1, that's just the position of my motor, and I know the angle, and I know this length here, I can calculate exactly what this position there is going to be just by using trigonometry. And for this one over here, it's going to be exactly the same process. Um, and in fact, once I've got the second point, I can do the same thing again for that joint position. So this whole mathematical complicated looking things comes down to this problem here. I know the position of these joints, what I call J1 and J2. And if I know those positions and I know the lengths of these arms, there's actually only two positions the tool, the pen, can be in. This point here, oops, sorry, and this point down here. Why? Because those are the only two points on these circles, because these are rigid arms, where that length there, those two lengths there match, and those two lengths there match. In every other position on these two circles, those arms would have to be different lengths. So what we need to do is we need to find an equation describing the system and then solve it for its roots. One root will be up here at position T1, and one root will be down here at position T2. So what we do by, um, how, how we do that is we literally just go and find the intersection of two circles. So this is position of one of the joints, this is the position of the other of the joints. We calculate what this line is, which is simple, it is just what is a straight line between those two joints, and then the location of those tools has got to be halfway down that line and up here, or halfway down that line and down there. So that's what this next step does, we calculate what is this, what is this H up here, um, we know that's R, uh, and so we can calculate the position of T1. Um, now, doing the inverse is actually exactly the same process, but instead of starting from knowing that point there, we start from knowing this point up here and asking what must this angle down here be. Once again, there's two possible solutions. There's an arm down there and an arm up there, but the mathematics of it are almost identical to the previous problem which is worked through in the lab script. So good luck. Uh, I'll do another video going through that in a little bit more detail, but that should be enough to get you started for the moment.